Well, it's great to see everybody here. Um, I've been uh, been on, like I said, on the campaign trail for three weeks now, and uh, so relatively new. And uh, uh, but we're really starting to get some traction. We're definitely we've got a lot of volunteers. We're starting to bring in some money, and uh, I think people like our message and what we're trying to do. Um, I, you may have heard I'm a banker, and that's that's I guess my big downfall. I'm a, I'm a community banker. I work for First National Bank of Scotia. I'm their CFO. In fact, I, I just was chosen as the Capital Region uh, CFO of the Year from the Capital District Business Review last year for businesses under 20 million. So I have some experience looking at financial things, and that's what I do. I try to predict, try to predict what's coming down the road for the bank and protect us, uh, you know, against perceived that threats and things like that. And that's how I got into this. I basically a few years ago started kind of like probably you guys did seeing what was going on and and, uh, and the healthcare debate really made me look at things and I started started to say alright what's really going on here I, I hear a lot on, on the news and on, the, on TV um, but I need to dig a little deeper I'm not just gonna believe what's what people are telling me so I started doing that and I started looking at the debt and I started thinking about how would I feel if this was a borrower if, if I was gonna lend money to this borrower as the country as a borrower and uh, quite frankly, it scared me. It was uh, it was staggering. I could not believe it. And uh, basically, what what we have is this incredible debt, which has increased uh, enormously over the past few years. We're financing it with variable rate money. Forty percent of our debt is less than uh, less than four years. So most of it is going to be repricing. We know that rates are the lowest they've ever been. Uh, and just as an example, a one-year treasury is at point 0.1. When I started at the bank, those were over 5%, point 0.1 to 5%. So we're paying about $425 billion in interest right now. That would, could very easily, within the next few years, be a trillion to a trillion and a, and a trillion two, um, according to what I've kind of put together, and, and I've got a lot of backup for that. We're only bringing in $2.5 trillion. So that's a big concern. That really leaves no money for anything, for any national defense, any of the things we want to do. And as we look at all the, what, what I would say are the symptoms of this issue coming down the road, jobs and taxes, all these things, um, we need to do something about this now. That, those jobs are not really going to change. That situation isn't going to change until we change basically the product that America has. When a business looks at this country, and we all know, we all were brought up, America's the greatest country on earth, and, and I believe that, and I know you guys do. But there's been a lot of examples throughout history that we've seen these countries and, and civilizations that were the greatest ever. And England may even be one of them, where this was English territory at one time. Now, I won't say they're completely gone, but they're not a very significant part of the world. Um, and that's... We, uh, basically what I'm saying there is we can't rest on our laurels and just make this assumption that because we're great, we'll always be great. It takes us to make it great, and we can't let that slide. So as we look at, as businesses look, and businesses are where jobs come from, toward our country, we need to have a good product. And they need to know what taxes will be. They need to be reasonable. We need to have an educated workforce. And... Um, uh, we basically have a good product for them to set up their business so they can create jobs so everything can work properly. As the debt goes up, as our interest payments go up, those types of things, taxes will have to go up. And they'll have to go up significantly. And that's where you start to price yourself out of the market and you start to see this structural issue become really uh, glaring um, spiral downward. And that's what I'm concerned about. And that's, that's basically why I'm running. That's, that's what I'm trying to do is fix those problems and, and give America a good product. What I see right now are politicians that are out there and what I saw, and this is you know, basically how do I fix this problem, I'm gonna run for Congress. What I saw was the people making these decisions are really good campaigners. And I think our president is a prime example, a great campaigner, you can't take that away from him, but a horrible leader. And, and, and really poor at uh, making decisions. And that's what I see 
the, the potential rep here, Paul Tonko, doing the same exact thing. You guys haven't seen him that much. He hasn't represented this district, but trust me, the other parts of the district have, and it's very concerning. There was an editorial in the paper uh, last Sunday that said uh, the GOP better do better if they want to beat Tonko. He's beat the GOP. They ought to pack, Dietrich ought to pack it up. He's beat the GOP 21 times in a row. It's 21 to 0. And I responded back, and I said this Sunday in the Gazette, um, that's a very impressive feat. But 42 years in public office hardly qualifies him to solve the, the issues of this country. In fact, I think that shows that he's more a part of the problem than of the solution. So that's where I'm at. I'm going to run against him, and I'm going to win. We have 700,000 people in this district. I can't be everywhere. I need help from groups like this and people like you guys to get the word out there and to actually tell people the truth. The truth may not be the easiest thing to tell people. It's hard to say when my opponent's saying, I'm going to give you free stuff. Look at this. You're going to get free this, free that. Everything's great. I'm looking a little further down the road saying, you know what? This free stuff is really going to hurt our children. If we want to pass our great nation and our lifestyle on to our children, we can't do that. And we're not talking 20 years down the road. We're talking two, three, maybe five years down the road. It's not something that can wait. And that's why I'm running, and that's why I'm asking for your help. Um, I guess, you know, what I, what I like to do is, right now I'm trying to, like I said, I'm three weeks into this. You guys have a little bit of flavor now for what I'm about and what I'm trying to accomplish. But I'd like to hear a little bit more from you too. And uh, you know, as I develop more, you know, what, what a congressman can do to help you guys in, in local issues, national issues, whatever it is. So uh, you know, I'd really like to hear from you guys.